Yay! Here we go! Another episode of MLP. The joy, the sorrow, the Appaloos is most wanted. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 5, Episode 6, Appaloosa's Most Wanted. And we start with another CMC episode. <laughs> yes, another CMC episode. And another CMC episode where no one gets their cutie marks. Mm -hmm. But they help someone else find out what their cutie mark actually means. And this reminds me of an idea I had that I mentioned to you once that it wouldn't it be neat if one of the cutie markers here got their cutie mark and they actually didn't know how they got their cutie mark? Yes, but I still don't see how an upside down horseshoe equals rodeo clown. <laughs> Not quite sure. Myself, I just know that uh, he was kind of a like ultimate klutz that apparently whatever he did made people laugh. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to look up some type of symbolism somewhere. <laughs> Well, no, he had it right. An upside down horseshoe is bad luck. Mm hmm, because the luck pours out of it. Mm hmm. It's kind of like when you're putting down your cowboy hat, you're actually supposed to put it down so the part that goes on top of your head is pointing up, otherwise the luck will fall out of it. At least that's what I remember someone telling me about my hat when I was apparently doing it wrong. The episode f was fun. I laughed a lot, especially the pitchfork mob carrying members of. <laughs> for me, that was my favorite part. <laughs> like, hey, I asked for a meeting, not a mob. Aww. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a lot of stuff like that in this episode that I really enjoyed. The mob ponies are awesome. <laughs> I can't remember the specifics, but I know there were several points where I was just laughing a little bit. It was pretty much like that throughout the episode. I also like the fact that this is actually an episode where the CMC start out going, we can get our cutie marks here, and then we actually have them helping someone else with their cutie marks. So that's a nice change up for them. Yes, it's nice to see their constant obsession with getting their cutie marks can be broken by other surrounding circumstances that are important. So, what in particular caught your fancy about this episode? Mainly the mob ponies. <laughs> and it was like, yay, we left Ponyville. Wait, we've already been to Appaloosa. I wanted somewhere new. <laughs> also, this is episode six. Shouldn't the Table Castle map have something else for us by now? <laughs> Though it is nice to see Brayburn again. It's amazing how the male members of the Apple family are prone to injury. <laughs> oh yeah, Big Mac in Apple Bucking season and now Brayburn in Appaloosa's Most Wanted. I just like saying it that way. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> huh. So did you... um? Not like anything in particular about this episode? Okay, for starters, how can Applejack have no clue why all the other rodeos were shut down? And if Trouble Shoes was so much trouble, why no wanted poster, you know, or even a description? Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, what was so unique about his hoof print, other than the fact that apparently he wears horseshoes, which most ponies don't? I think it's because of how big his hoof print was. Because it was shown to be larger than other ponies. Well, he's a very large pony. He was more horse-like than pony-like. I was thinking that he was more like a Clydesdale than anything else. Yeah, more draft horse. Mm hmm Even more so than Big Mac. And just the way he talks. I mean, he was so Eeyore. I mean, all that was missing was hanging his head down and having a tail that falls off. <laughs> I wonder if they were going for that. I might have to look up some stuff about this episode later. Because I like to do hints like that and references in My Little Pony, so it could be a reference to Eeyore. I was also reminded of another character from another show. It was basically a teenage version of Bam Bam and Pebbles, and they had this friend who was really unlucky. Mm. I vaguely remember that. Yeah, I vaguely remember that too. That's where I'm going, uh... <laughs> no, I think most of the early Hanna-Barbera cartoons of my childhood have been mostly blocked off. <laughs> Uh, exit stage left. <laughs> Picnic basket. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all I remember. That and the one episode where apparently Bam Bam could sing really well, but only in a shower. But we're talking about ponies here. Yeah, so enough sidetracking. Oh, but I like sidetracking. It's so much fun. <laughs> this is not a Legend of Zelda game. This is a podcast recording. We're going to lose our audience. <laughs> Look! A side story! Let's follow that instead! Uh, but 
yeah, I didn't really have anything, you know, too negative about the episode. It, it had a nice flow to it. It's just something like, this is just um, another episode. <laughs> it's a nice story about how you should, you know, figure out what you really are and enjoy it. <laughs> I had a better description of that, but I forgot it. So maybe you can come up with it. <laughs> I think it's more along the lines of you can still do what you love it may just not be in the way you expected ah yes that is a good way to describe that oh it reminds me of a i suddenly remembered another moment from the episode that i really liked where the sheriff says something dramatic and you hear the harmonica in the background and then he goes what and he looks over and there's a guy playing harmonica and he's like uh and the guy who's playing the harmonica goes oh uh sorry <laughs> No, and then there was an interesting moment animation-wise um, after the meeting, and the sheriff ponies jump down off of the porch and walk through the crowd. The way the sheriff was walking, it was more like the Old West, you know, wide-legged stance, hands over your guns. Oh, yeah. I noticed that, too. I was like, that's a nice touch. I'm like, it looks a little awkward, and it's... Not relevant because he's not carrying guns, and the villain is nowhere in sight, but still. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of nice touches like that. So what did you think of Trouble Shoes? Well, like I already said, he's very much an Eeyore-type character in the early part. And then with the ending of going more into clowning, it reminded me more of the non-canon comic where Pinkie Pie and Twilight go to see the professional clown pony. Oh yeah, that was actually one of the good comics. <laughs> and it also had a similar message because he was getting too old for his clowning, but he still loved it. So find another way to look at it, and he started teaching. Hmm, that is a good point. Wow, nice. I know he enjoyed it, but it was, it just felt very normal, is the best way to put it. It's like, it had its good points, it had its normal points, but you know, it was just good. Actually, that is a good description of it. It was just good. <laughs> <laughs> and back to nitpicking, why were the CMC not in trouble for breaking Trouble Shoes out of jail? They, by the end of the episode, only, all they were clearly in trouble for, according to Applejack, was running off when she told them to stay put. Not for a jailbreak, not for aiding and abetting a known criminal. <laughs> also, going back to the escape, if you're going to run in and convince the sheriff to run out of the office suddenly, why did Sweetie Belle need to levitate the keys? Hmm. Didn't she, like, levitate the keys off of him before they um, ran in and surprised him and got him to run out? No, they were hanging on the wall. So the only reason to take them is if they were going to assume that he would grab the keys when he ran out in a hurry. But by the same token... If he was going to grab them, he would have noticed they were missing and wouldn't have left because he would have been searching everywhere for the keys. Oh, that is a good point. But let's not be too specific. We may end up killing cat girls. <laughs> we're not talking physics and we're not talking anime. It was a nice chance for Sweetie Belle to show that she's gotten a little more control of her unicorn magic, but it wasn't really necessary. Uh, well, it was necessary to show the audience that she was getting better at her magic. Haha, I have a valid point. <laughs> If she was really getting better at her magic, she could have levitated some leaves off those trees to make them a rain shield. Damn it. <laughs> you know better than to get into point and counterpoint with me. <laughs> you always beat me. <sighs> one day, one day I'll get my revenge. <laughs> so, got anything else? I like the touch of, you know, Applejack showing off this huge trophy and the girls are completely ignoring her. <laughs> like, yeah, nice. When are you three so into rodeo clowns? Yeah, whatever, sis. <laughs> yeah, that was a good scene. Uh, also, I was like, yep, he's going to lose pieces of clothing until it's revealed. He is the bad guy, quote unquote. Which is pretty much a given anytime you put a disguise in on like that. And of course, it's not going to happen until after they've all been convinced of, wow, this is the best rodeo clown pony ever. And getting back to the whole kidnapping accusation, I know the girls were pulled away and locked back up, but there was nothing wrong with their voices. There's no reason they couldn't have been yelling at the top of their lungs that he didn't kidnap them. Yeah, I was thinking that too. It's like, um, just speak up, girls. Yeah, any time now. Now would be a good. Now, but not. 
oh, at least they finally got their voice in there. <laughs> yeah, at the very end, after it's already been noted, yeah, you're a really good rodeo pony and I will take all of that stuff as accidents, but why did you kidnap these fillies? Really, you girls have to wait till all the way till the end to fess up? Though I actually felt kind of sorry for the other rodeo clown ponies, because they didn't rehearse this. <laughs> no, no, it was hilarious, but like, um, who is this? And I don't remember this part of the routine. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, you know what's really kind of funny is uh, part of the routine, I can't remember exactly which part, but it kind of reminded me of that scene in Dumbo when he was kind of dressed up as a clown and I believe there was a flaming building and stuff like that. <laughs> God, it's been so forever since I've seen that movie. Oh, it's a flaming building, there's a pool of water for Dumbo to jump down into, one of the clowns wears an elephant mask and a dress and is running around screaming, my baby, my baby, save my baby. And the other clowns are dressed up like firefighters, and they go up on a ladder and throw water directly in Dumbo's face. Damn, you're good! <laughs> okay, so both Apple Bloom and Scootaloo were both really going all out on this plan of let's go find trouble shoes. And Sweetie Belle was the voice of caution and reason this time. If she just stuck to her convictions a little more... None of this would have happened because she could have gone back and gotten Brayburn or Applejack or just yelled really loud and brought half the town. Hmm. You know, that's a good point. They should actually make an episode around Sweetie Belle standing up to the other CMC. Because sometimes you just have to stand up to your friends. <laughs> like, you guys are being idiots. <laughs> also, uh, it was very clearly highlighted that of the three, Sweetie Belle is the least physically active. Because the three of them are all the same size, and Apple Bloom and Scootaloo had no trouble going on, where Sweetie Belle was having trouble getting over the fences, and she was lagging behind not just because of her, you know, this is a bad idea. Though she does get points for not saying I told you so. So, what are your final thoughts on this episode? It was a pretty good episode. Nice lesson. Nice to see that actions had consequences. That the girls did get in trouble for what they did. Even though they also helped someone, that didn't get them off the hook of, You deliberately disobeyed me. Name that movie. <laughs> Name that movie. Uh, <laughs> God. Dang it, it's on the tip of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Lion King. Oh! I knew it was a Disney movie, but my brain kept going for the most recent ones. <laughs> you know my repertoire better than that. Yes. So it was an enjoyable episode overall. I'm glad we made it out of Ponyville. And I still go back to, I still want more Table Castle map adventures. You started that as the season opener, which implies to me that we should at least be going occasionally. Overall, I liked the episode. It was definitely a good episode. It didn't disappoint. It was pretty standard fare. We got a pretty nice lesson. The CMC were actually better than the usual. Let's get our guinea marks! Random things ensue. Except this time it was like, let's get our guinea marks! Something else happens, distracts us from our random things, but it was still random. Okay, cool. And we got a new character. We got to see Brayburn again. And there was consequences to your actions, as you pointed out. So, I liked it. It was good. I enjoyed it. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 6, Appaloosa's Most Wanted. Thanks for listening. If you want to see more of my art, you can find it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep up to date with this podcast and get other tidbits, you can follow us on Tumblr as well. If you really like our podcast, please consider subscribing and or leaving comments below. Please keep them nice. If you would like some art of your own, I am currently open for commissions. All links in the description.